Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. Um, I would like to welcome you also to our Tuesday lesson. Um, I hope you've had a good week so far if you haven't joined us already for these lessons. Um, and I hope that you are going to enjoy your public holiday tomorrow and that you're going to encourage everybody you know that's legal of legal age to go vote. Okay, grade 11s. Um, Another thing I'd like to suggest is that you join the to enable um, science class so that you can message me and let me know which sections you'd like to go through or if you've got any sections or any concerns, feel free to contact me. Okay, so in the last lesson we were talking about forces. So I'm going to carry on with that and then we're going to move on to Newton's law because forces and Newton's laws are move work hand in hand. So wait, I need to get a pen. Oh, it's already got a pen. Okay, let's go. So forces on the inclined plane. Now we already spoke about forces on an inclined plane. Remember we had um, an inclined plane that looked like this. Oh. And then we had a block. And we had the force down due to the force of gravity. And then we had a normal force, if normal. And then there possibly was a force of friction. So those are the forces on the income plane. Now at the moment, what we've been doing in the last lesson, we, was, we were talking about force and free body diagrams. And we were discussing stationary forces. Stationary with the force of two Newtons acting on the book, book horizontally. And we also spoke about a constant velocity and the force diagrams for constant velocity. Now, I don't even know if you recall, but I'm just going to, and I can't. In, in this case, you remember that since it's stationary, all the forces bear and balance each other out, okay? And the only force is acting on it and the force down due to the gravity and the normal force, the force up that's holding the book up or the force, the table on the book, whichever you want to call it. Yeah, it was stationary, but there was a force of two Newtons acting on the book horizontally. So if there was a force applied of two Newtons, then obviously if it was stationary, there had to be a force of friction. And yeah, we spoke about the fact that it has a constant velocity, which again means that there must be a force of friction. So this is the force applied and this is the force of friction. And the reason for that is because of the fact that if it's got a constant velocity, it means acceleration is zero, which means its net force is zero. So therefore, the force of friction has to equal to the force applied. And what I said to you last time was that you can't tell a constant velocity um, versus something that is stationary just from this type of drawing. We don't know at this point in time. If I didn't tell you this constant velocity, I saw this. Now, so all there was F net equals zero. I don't know at this point in time whether it is stationary or if it is moving with a constant velocity. And I won't know until someone tells me because you cannot tell because of the fact that all the forces are balanced. However, if we have got acceleration, then obviously we've got the force of gravity and we've got the normal force. What we do have now is an applied force, which is going to be bigger than the force of friction. Or if I was drawing the free body diagram, remember you've got a color in your dot, okay? You've got force applied. You've got the force of friction, which is gonna be smaller than the force applied. Otherwise you won't have acceleration because that means now that we've got a net force. We've got the force of gravity and we've got the normal force. Now remember what I said to you as well, grade 11s, these force diagrams, they need to be drawn in pencil with a ruler, in pencil with a ruler, because if you make a mistake, you at least can erase it. And you need to be drawing with the ruler because these are supposed to be straight lines. Also, you need to be aware of the fact that these two, because they cancel each other out, need to be approximately the same length. And because we've got an acceleration, the applied force has to be bigger than the force of friction. So if I had to write an equation for this, I would say the force, the net force or resultant force, whichever you want to call it, is equal to remember always the sum of all the forces. OK, but if we we're talking about an acceleration in the horizontal. 
direction. Sorry. Then basically we are looking at only these two, the force of friction and the force applied. And I'm going to choose this direction as positive. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that my equation now is going to be F net is equal to F A plus minus the force of friction. Because remember, by doing this, you are showing that you know that the resultant force on the net force is equal to the sum of all the forces, which then obviously is going to be force applied minus the force of friction. But if you just write that, you're not showing that you know that the definition for the net to resultant force is that it's the sum of all the forces. So you need to be careful of that. Right, now we're going to look at application of Newton's second law of motion. Now, what is Newton's second law of motion? We've already mentioned it before. We've got F net equals mass times acceleration. Okay, so it says a little boy drags a box of toys, mass 12 kilograms, which he tied to the back of his bicycle. Okay, so here is his box of toys and here is his bicycle. Okay, and usually there's a picture, but apparently not this time. Okay, so there is... I know, terrible drawing, but there we go. Okay, so he's on his bicycle. This has got a mass of 12 kgs. The box accelerates to the right at two meters per second squared. Suppose the box and its contents experiences a constant horizontal frictional force of eight newtons. Frictional force of eight newtons, force of friction. And the rope is attached, the bicycle forms an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So that angle there is 30 degrees, right? It says draw a force diagram showing all the forces applied to the box. Okay, so we're going to do that because then we're going to use it. Okay, so a force diagram can have a box and I'm putting a box because it makes my life easier. First of all, do you agree we've got the force of gravity? You cannot ignore that just because it's not causing any movement, okay? And you also cannot ignore the force that is normal, F normal. And remember what I said, that these are A, supposed to be straight lines, and B, that they're supposed to be more or less equal in length. And if you can't actually measure it, if you forgot your ruler, then I'd usually use an edge of a book to make these straight lines, and then do a little line like this, like you're doing maths, to show that they're supposed to be equal in length. Right, now, the other force is acting on it. Do you agree that if we choose this to be the direction it is moving, then it says it's going to the right. Okay, so it is moving that direction. Then this here, at an angle of 30 degrees, angle of 30 degrees, is the force applied. It's the force of the tension in the rope, okay? And there's also a force of friction, which is your eight newtons. Okay, so that there is your force diagram. Now it says calculate the force F being exerted on the box. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the applied force, the applied force. We actually wanna know this. Okay, so we know that F net equals mass times acceleration. But remember it equals the sum of all the forces. Now here's the tricky thing. Do you agree that this is moving horizontally? It's moving horizontally, which means that the horizontal component of this applied force is what is making it move to the right, okay? So we are going to first work out what the F net in the horizontal direction is, the horizontal component, and then we're gonna use that to find out what the actual force is in the rope. So the F net is the mass times acceleration. The mass of the box is 12 times by the acceleration two equals the force horizontal plus the force of friction. Remember we write plus because we always have to show that the net force is, is the sum of all the forces. Okay, it's the sum of all the forces. Please understand the reason I'm working the horizontal component out is because that's what actually is making it move to the right, okay? This rope, this applied force is doing two things. The one thing it's doing is pulling the blocks along the ground to the right and the other thing it's doing is it's pulling it slightly off the ground 
Okay, so in other words, this rope here is doing two things. It's partly pulling the box along the ground and it's partly pulling it up, okay, off the ground. Now, we don't really care about the up off the ground. What we care about is this dude here. So that is what we're working at now. So we've got the force of friction. They tell us that it is eight newtons. So we've got to write this properly. It becomes 24 is equal to force horizontal plus minus the eight newtons. Why? Because I'm choosing right as positive because that is the direction I'm actually moving in, which means the force of friction is going to be negative. So therefore the horizontal force is going to be 24 plus eight is FH. So that is 32 newtons is FH. Okay, so this here is 32 newtons. But we want the force that's actually been exerted on the box, which is this dude here. Okay, we want that. So luckily for us, we've got a right angle triangle. So we can say Sakatoa. We've just worked out this here, which is the line next to the angle. So that's adjacent. So we can tick off adjacent. We want the applied force, which is opposite of 90 degrees. So therefore, that's the hypotenuse. So we can tick off hypotenuse. So you can see we're going to use cos. So we can say cos of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is 32, over the hypotenuse. Therefore, the hypotenuse is equal to 32 over cos of 30 degrees. Okay, and then I need my calculator. So let's get the calculator out and switch it on. And we're working out 32 divided by cos of 30 degrees. And if you've been watching these videos for a while, you will see that every time I do this, the first time I do degrees in a, quest, in a video, I say to you guys, please make sure that your calculator has got a big D there, or at least does not have an R for radians. And the reason is because if you mess that up, if you don't get that right, then your whole sum is wrong. Okay, and a whole exam paper can be wrong. So please make sure that, that is the appropriate letter there. And you can change it. If you've got a Sharp or a Casio, I think there's a button at the back that you can just press to reset the whole thing. Otherwise, you can go into your setup in your mode and find a place where it says, what do you want degrees or radians? And it will tell you. If you don't have the manual, Google it. It's out there, okay? Right, so now equals. So that's useless to us. If I say to you, yes, the force uh, that you applied was 64 root three over three, and that means nothing. So we press the SD button and that's better. It's 36.95 Newtons. So force applied is 36,95 Newtons. And that's it. That's what you had to work out. You had to work out the tension in the rope, how much force was actually exerted on the box. Okay, nice question. Hey, All right, let's try another one. A frictionless inclined plane forms an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so here's my inclined plane, and we're going to just tell you that that's 20 degrees. Calculate the constant force that was exert that has to be exerted parallel to the inclined surface. Okay, so there's a force of friction on a 12 kilogram container, so that it accelerates up upwards along the plane. Okay, wait, so there's something wrong with this, okay. Upwards at 1,5 meters per second squared. And I said there was something wrong, and why did I say there's something wrong? Because do you agree, you know, it's, it's a frictionless force, so that's not the frictions, this is the applied force. Sorry, this is applied force, there we go. I thought there was friction, so I thought my friction was in the wrong direction, but actually it says it's a frictionless inclined plane. So let's, the first thing we need to do, it says calculate the constant force. They wanna know what force needs to be applied to get this thing to accelerate at 1.5 meters per second squared up the slope. Okay, right. But now let's just draw a free body diagram to put in all the forces so that we can work out what exactly is going on here. So do you agree here is our box, our crate? Okay, and there is 
my slope. Do you agree that this here is the force of gravity and that there is F normal and there's obviously an applied force up. Okay, happy with that. But now there is something that's important that mustn't be forgotten. This force of gravity is doing two things. The one thing it's doing is pulling it into the ground so that it doesn't float off. So this is equal to this, right? And the other thing that the force of gravity is doing is pulling this crate down the slope. And that's FG parallel. So basically, there is a net force, F net, which is parallel to the surface, right? Parallel to the surface. And it is made up of two forces. It's made up of the sum of the applied force plus the force of gravity parallel. But the force of gravity parallel is downwards. The applied force is obviously upwards because this dude is accelerating it upwards. So the net force is upwards, okay? So do you agree I can choose this as positive and then that's gonna be negative. So then I go, well, in that case, we've got FA plus minus FG parallel, which is going to be FA minus FG parallel. Okay, happy. So now, do we have the net force? Yes, we do, because we've got the mass and we've got the acceleration. The mass of the object is 12 kgs and the acceleration is 1,5. Okay, so now what do we need to work out? We need to work out this FG parallel. Okay, so if we take this triangle, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So this here is FG, and then that there, and then this bit here is the FG parallel. So that is this bit here, right? Then we know that this angle here has to be 20 degrees which means this angle up there is 20 degrees and that's 90. Okay, we know what FG is. That is mass times gravity. And this is the opposite side and that's the hypotenuse. So we can use Sakatoa. So, 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 so we want FG parallel, which is the opposite so, side We've got the hypotenuse, okay, so we're going to use sine. So we're going to say, let's just do this in a different color so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to say sine of 20 degrees equals the opposite side, which is Fg parallel over mass times gravity. Therefore, Mg sine 20 degrees is equal to FG parallel. And I'm going to take that and substitute it into here. Okay, so 12 times 1.5 is 18 is equal to force applied minus, and let's just write that out, MG sine of 20 degrees. So then if we take it across, we have to add it. So it becomes 18 plus the mass of this object is 12 times 9.8 sine of 20 degrees is going to be the applied force. How much the guy was pushing it in order for this to move up, not just with a constant velocity, but with an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so now what we need is a calculator. So let's do this. Okay. So we go 12, I'm doing the complicated bit first. I'm doing 12 times 9.8 times sine of 20 equals that. And then I have to add 18 and it equals 58.22. So this equals 58,22 newtons, and that's obviously, it's a constant force that has to be, okay, and then you can just go up 
the slope just to make sure that you get all the marks. So that is the force that is applied up the hill in order to make this accelerate. Okay, happy with that. So basically what you have to do is always consider all the forces that is that are acting on the object. Right, now we need to talk two-body systems and two-body systems are quite tricky and they are very important because as I may have mentioned before to you, just as in um, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm drawing a cloud around it. So let's just finish that because it's distracting me now. Okay, <laughs> just as much as fashion has got trends, right? As in one minute skinny jeans are all the rage and then the next thing is you have to be wearing um, weird long clothes that hang off your hips and everything else. And the next thing, um, long earrings and then the next thing, short earrings are in, etc, etc, okay? Just as much as clothes and fashion have got trends, um, the people who examine the papers, the physical science papers, have things that they get I'm very happy about doing or the, I call them fashions or trends within the science exams. At the moment, the two body systems are very popular to be examined. The reason is, is that they are new in the CAPS curriculum. Um, I know the CAPS curriculum has been out for a couple of years now, but the two body system wasn't really examined properly. But over the last year and a half or last two years, the two body system has become a very popular question with the examining body. And every time you go to a meeting where they ask you, uh, I mean, they tell you about what's important to teach the kids, they say you must teach them two body systems. So we're going to go through two body systems and then we're going to go through a couple of examples because this is quite important and it's quite a tricky section and you just have to think it through nice and slowly okay and in order to do two body systems well you need to be able to do free body diagrams which is why we stress the free body diagrams so seriously okay so let's get started so this year is actually a three body diagram I know I said two body, two body systems, but this is a three body system but it's fine and I've chosen to use this because I actually, it's easier for you to really understand what's happening if there's more than two. Okay, so let's go through it. What we've got here, we've got an eight kilogram mass, a five kilogram mass and a six kilogram mass, right? And they're all being pulled with a force of 38 newtons. Okay, they're all being pulled with a force of 38 newtons. There is a tension in rope T1 and a tension in rope 2T. Now you, two, T2. Now you need to think about this. If this rope wasn't fully tightened, then obviously the box six wouldn't move. Similarly, if this rope, T1 rope, is not tightened properly, then the five kilogram block is not going to move. But if these blocks are all to move as one big unit, okay, you could think of T1 and T2 as being solid, okay, instead of it being ropes, they could be thought of as being solid, then T1 and T2 are going to have, are going to have tensions in them, okay, if they straight, if string, they have tensions, they're going to have a tightness in both T1 and T2, they're going to have forces within them. So what is happening is that the force is applied to the box and this is connected to the other boxes and they tell us that the whole system is accelerating to the left. They tell us that the whole system is accelerating to the left, right? So what you need to understand then is that this whole thing is accelerating at the same rate. The whole thing is accelerating at the same rate. The question is to find the tensions in the ropes. Okay, these T1 and T2. So we're going to apply the second law, which is F net equals MA to each box individually as well as to the whole system and then get a whole bunch of multiple choice, not a multiple choice, um, we're going to get a whole bunch of equations that we can simultaneously equate. Not necessarily four of them, maybe just two of them, we'll see how it goes. So let's start. First of all, do you agree that T1 does two things? It pulls on the eight kilogram blocks to the right, but it also pulls just as hard on the five kilogram block to the left. Because if it didn't do that, then there would be slack in this rope. They'd, in order for there to be a tight rope, 
it is basically pulling. So it's the equivalent of a dude standing here with his arms out, okay? And he's holding the eight kilogram and the five kilogram and he's pulling on them equivalently, okay? Right, now, a T2 is doing exactly the same thing. Another guy here holding on and keeping, making sure that there is a tight tension in this rope, okay? Now, what's important is that T1 must be smaller than 38 newtons. Otherwise, the 8 kilogram block couldn't accelerate. Look at this. If you just look at these two, forget about anything else. If we just look at these two forces that are acting on it. Do you agree that T1 has to be smaller than 38 newtons? Otherwise, this block is not going to move at all, right? Okay. T2 pulls on the block like we just said. But again, this T, if we now look at this, just this dude here in the middle, this has just got T1 here and T2 there. So it makes sense that T1 has to be bigger than T2. So what are we saying? We're saying the 38 Newtons has to be bigger than T1, which in turn has to be bigger than T2 for this thing to accelerate. Okay, so that helps us with our logic. So if we get numbers that don't obey this rule, then we've done something wrong. Okay, now, Firstly, we're going to draw a free body diagram. Now, let's just go back up. Do you agree we've got 8 kilograms, 5 kilograms, and 6 kilograms? I'm going to erase all the writing here. Okay. So, this is 8, this is 5, and this is 6. So, if I wanted to, I could think of this as being one big thing. Okay. Let's pretend that this is a toy. Okay. And it's a toy train. Okay, there's like, I know, I can't draw. And then it's joined on and there's like a little trailer. Okay, and this here would be the eight kilogram and this is the five kilogram. I know it's quite a heavy toy. So you've got a little kid that is pulling and there's another trailer. Okay, right, and that's six kilograms. So you've got a little kid that is pulling it and he's pulling it with the force of 38 Newtons. That's effectively what's here happening here. So I can think of this as one being one big, object okay as far as the little kids concerned this is one big object right and he's pulling it with the force of 38 newtons okay so what do we say if we then sorry let's go back up so if you go 8 plus 5 plus 6 it works out to be 19 kilograms so instead of me drawing the three i can draw it as one object of 19 kilograms right so then what are the forces acting on it? There's obviously the force of gravity, which is mg. There's a normal force, and these are the equal, and they cancel each other out. There is also a force of 38 newtons to the left. Now you'll notice that they don't mean mention friction. In fact, they say it's a frictionless law. So that means we don't have to worry about friction, which is wonderful, because it means that the entire force to the left is making this accelerate, okay? So we know that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. And since the total mass is 19, we can say F net is equal to 19, but the net force is 38, sorry, 19A. So therefore is 19A, therefore the acceleration is two meters per second squared. So that means that Every single part of the system is accelerating with a constant acceleration of two meters per second squared. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to look at each of these separately. So let's start with the end one because it's only got one force on it that counts. Okay, so we're going to look at this studio first. And we're going to say, okay, fine, we've got T2. The tension in the string is called T2. Just in case you didn't know, tension in a string is basically the same as force. And it's both measured in newtons. So it's just a different name for when it's in a string. If this was a steel block, we would call it the force, but now because it's a string or rope, we call it the tension. Okay, so if we had to draw the force diagram for the six kilogram block, do you agree you've got the normal force up and you've got the force of gravity down and they're equal and they cancel each other out. But we have T2, which is the force to the right. So we know that F net is equal to mass times acceleration 
Okay, but if we know that the acceleration of the whole thing is two, we worked it out, right? So if net for this object is going to be equal to T2, which equals six times two, which is 12 Newtons, right? So therefore we know already now that this is 12 Newtons. Now we need to work out T1. So we know that T2 is 12 Newtons because we've just proven it. These, the normal and the force of gravity cancel each other out. So we're left with T1. Okay, so again we can say F net is equal to T1 plus T2. T1 plus T2. Remember that you always have to show this first before you can go into the next step. But do you agree that T2 is in the opposite direction? So we can say it's T1 plus minus T2. The mass of this is 5 kilograms and its acceleration is 2 because we worked it out. This T2 is 12 newtons. So you've got 10 plus 12 which equals T1, which equals 22 Newtons. There we go. Right, so now we have proven it. Now let's just check it. Let's just check it. If we now look at the eight kilogram block, these again cancel the normal and the force of gravity. So you've got the 38 Newtons and we've got 21 Newtons going backwards. So if we look at that, we know that F net equals the sum of all the forces, which is going to be 38 plus minus T1, which is going to be 38 minus 22, which is going to be equal to 8 times something. So 38 minus 22 is 16. 8 times 2 is 16. So yay, it works, which means we are perfectly correct with our tensions. Okay. So let's now try an example. We have a motor car of mass 900 kilograms, okay. Now grade 10's just, and grade 11's just a little bit of a hint, okay. Usually they will provide you with a diagram, okay. And what I would seriously suggest you do is what I find a lot of my students do, and it's a silly mistake, is they don't read this bit. They look at the diagram and they immediately start on the question, which is why I haven't included a diagram yet because I wanted to go through it with you. And the important thing is to realize that the information they give here may not reflect on the diagram. In other words, there might be extra information, a little blurb that you're not reading. And that might be why you sit there staring at the question for like 15 minutes before you realize that you've missed information. So always read everything in the blurb and then highlight it or underline it to make sure that you've seen it, okay? So a car of mass of M of mass 900 kgs, he pulls a trailer S of mass 150 kgs on a level road and he's going in the easterly direction. Oh, power. Okay, so let's just do it again. So you've got him going in an easterly direction, and now my car is just even worse. Okay, right? But they're going this way in an easterly direction, and this is a car of mass 900 kgs, and here is the trailer of mass 150 kgs, and this is car M, and this is the trailer. Okay. The engine of the car exerts a force, a forward force of 8,000 newtons. The car experiences a frictional force of 1,800 newtons and the trailer a frictional force of 300 newtons, okay? Now it says draw a separate free body diagram for the car and the trailer and clearly label all the forces. Okay, so let's do that. Free body diagram is a dot. So we've got a dot and we're now doing the trailer, okay? The trailer, so here's the trailer, we're doing the studio. So do you agree that obviously there is a force of gravity and there is a normal force, F normal, and if you can't draw them equal, you must label them to show that they're equal, right? Then they tell us that there is a force of friction on it. There is the force of friction, which is making it go to the left, okay, and that it happens to be 300 newtons. And then there's the force of the rope, okay, the force of the rope, which I'm going to call T, okay. Right, 
and actually there's something wrong with my diagram and I'm hoping you're all moaning at me because what is wrong? Your tension obviously has to be longer than the force of friction, otherwise there'd be no acceleration. Okay, right. So this here is the trailer S. Now we have to look at the car. Do you agree that there's a force forward by the car's engine? So I'm going to get Fe for the engine, right? There's obviously the gravity, the force of gravity, and there's obviously the normal force. Now, we have two forces acting backwards on this. We've got the force of friction, which is 1800 newtons, but we also have the force backwards due to the force of friction, I mean, due to the tension in the rope. Darn it. Due to the tension in the rope. Okay, so there are our drawings. Now it said determine acceleration are that the system experiences to two decimal places. So the reason they ask you to draw separate free body diagrams is because they're expecting you to use this information to work out the next thing. Okay. Sorry, so we know that this is 8,000 Newtons. Okay, so do you agree in order for there to be acceleration, there has to be an F net? Okay, so let's look at the trailer first. So F net is going to be the force forward, which is tension, plus the force of friction, which is obviously negative. Okay, do you agree with that? So I'm going to choose this direction as positive because it's going easily. So the F net is going to be the mass of the car, which I mean mass of the trailer, which is 150, times by the acceleration is equal to the tension in the rope, which we don't know, plus minus 300. So therefore 150A is equal to T minus 300. And we're going to call this equation 1. Now we're going to look at this dude here. So we know that F net is equal to what? We know that F net is equal to sorry, F net is equal to the force of the engine, okay, plus the tension, plus the force of friction on the car. So that F net is going to be 300A is equal to the force of the engine, which is 8,000 Sorry, I just realized I'm doing this question here and there's a quick, easy way to get this and I'll do it for you now. Plus the tension in the string, plus the force of friction, which is minus, um, have they given it to us? Yes, it's 1800. Okay, so therefore we can say that 300A is equal to 8,000 minus 1,800, which is going to be 6,200 plus T, and that's equation 2. Right, and we could solve this because we've got two simultaneous equations, and we could get out the acceleration and then get out T, but there's actually a quick way we can do this, and that is by saying that we know that the whole thing is can be drawn up as one big thing, right? Remember like we did in the previous thing where we had the children's train, where we had all the chain and the two bits that were traveled grouped together as one. So I could consider the car and the trailer as one object. So this is car and the trailer, right? And that has a force forward of 8,000 Newtons. We know that there's a force of friction on the trailer of 300 and on the car of 1,800. So if you look at that, so now I'm looking at this question here. I can do it carrying on with this, but there's a quicker way. 
And that is to go, well, we know that F net is equal to the force forward plus the force of, um, let's get it and go, force of the engine plus the force of the friction on the car plus the force of friction on the trailer. Okay, and these two here are in the opposite direction, they're negative. So I could go F net is equal to the force of the engine, which is 8,000 plus minus 300 plus minus 1,800. Okay, and I'm sorry it's messy, but I'm actually going to write this now down here. So we're going to do this. So we go F net is equal to 8,000 minus 2,100. Okay. So, and the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, but the net force has to add up to these masses, and the masses are 150 and 900. So, therefore, we can say 900 plus 150 A is equal to 8,000 minus 2,100. So we can divide both of these by this. So that becomes 1,050. And we can quickly pop it into our calculator. And we go 8,000 minus 2,100 is equal to 5,900 divided by 1,050 equals 5 comma, and they want to round up to two decimal places, so it becomes 5.62. So acceleration is 5 comma 62 meters per second squared. Okay, so let me just explain what I did. I realized while I was doing this that I'm going to end up with two simultaneous equations and I could solve for A using the two simultaneous equations, right? But then I realized that actually there's an easier way to do this and that is to use this, to realize that we could actually include this all as one big object. In other words, I'm including that. I'm saying, okay, fine, we've got this is one big object. There's a force forward of 8,000 newtons by the car's engine. Okay, right. Then there is the force back, the force of friction on the trailer, the force of friction on the car. So the total force acting on this is the force of the engine, which is your 8,000, minus the force of friction for the car, which is 1,800, minus the force of friction on the trailer, which is 300, which gives me a net force. Okay, but that net force is equal to the 8,000 minus the 2,100. So it means that my acceleration is going to be 5.62 meters per second squared, which means at this point in time, I don't need simultaneous equations. I can just substitute that 5.62 into, for example, this equation. I could say 150 times 5,62 equals T minus 300. And then, okay, I can say, well, that's pretty easy then because we've got 150 times 5 comma 62 plus 300 is equal to T and we can get out our calculator and clear it and we can go 150 times 5.62 equals plus 300 equals, and that works out to be 1,143 newtons, it equals to be 1,143 newtons. You know what I'm going to do, grade 11s, I'm actually going to do this question again tomorrow or the next time I see it, which I think is Thursday. I'm just going to go through this question again um, to show you the quick and easier way without me writing on it so it looks like such a mess. Okay, and then make sure that you understand it. And then we're going to go through some exam level. Well, this is an exam level question, but we're going to go through some more exam level questions on two system bodies. Right, um, that's the end of today's lesson. Please join us on Thursday and I will go through this again and make sure you understand it perfectly. Have a great day.